This is the taxiway diagram of Centennial Airport in Denver. The largest runway here is 35 right, 10,000 feet. When the airport's busy, there'll be plenty of traffic, including bigger jets, using this runway. Very close to this runway is the parallel 35 left, at only 7,000 feet. It's so close that it's not ideal to have simultaneous instrument approaches into the two runways. And as a matter of fact, there is no instrument approach to runway 35 left. With winds out of the north when 35 right is busy, smaller, slower aircraft may be assigned 35 left for landing. But with no instrument approach, how can aircraft land there in IFR conditions? We'll use what's called a sidestep maneuver to do so. Here's the approach plate for the ILS 35 right. Looking at the minimum section, we see minimums for the ILS as well as for the localizer only. Below that, we have a sidestep 35 left minimum. This approach allows for a sidestep to be made from 35 right to 35 left. The aim says that ATC can authorize a sidestep maneuver from an approach on a runway to a parallel runway as long as they're separated by 1,200 feet or less. The aircraft will be cleared for a specific approach with a sidestep authorized. So for this airport, it would be cleared ILS 35 right, sidestep to 35 left. Pilots are expected to commence the sidestep maneuver as soon as possible after the runway environment is in sight. The minimums are based on non-precision criteria, so the minimum listed on the approach plate is an MDA and is higher than the precision decision altitude of the ILS, though it can still be lower than a circling minimum. 7110.65, the controller's handbook, lets ATCs know that they can assign a sidestep when one is authorized by an instrument approach procedure and the details will be listed in the chart. This can create some confusion because it sometimes happens that an aircraft on final for a runway could be asked to sidestep to a parallel runway even if no approach has a sidestep available. And really what the controller is asking for is more of a circle to the parallel runway, but the sidestep terminology is often used. A good example is if you were landing on one runway and an aircraft is disabled on the ground there, the controller would instruct you to sidestep or go around, giving you the option to use a parallel runway if you can. They'll do this even if the approach doesn't have a sidestep option, but it's not an instrument procedure, it's a visual thing. Anyways, here at Centennial, we've been cleared for the ILS with a sidestep to the left. We've intercepted the localizer and glide slope, and we'd have been cleared to land on runway 35 left at this point. We're going to level off at 6,500, just above the sidestep MDA. We gain sight of both runways, we need the left runway, the one we're landing on in sight, and as soon as we have it in sight, we break off the approach and step to the left to line up on that center line. Now, we've purposely destabilized our approach, so it's important we keep a good descent profile. The pappies are helpful for this as always. And just like that, we've used the instrument approach for one runway to conduct a landing on another using the sidestep. Like anything else in aviation, you as pilot in command are the ultimate decider on if you should do this type of approach or not. It's a bit aggressive to destabilize like this so close to the runway, and it's not like we get a ton of practice with sidesteps. So make sure you're aware if your destination has this and be ready to do it or have a plan B for something else. And as always, check out all our training, including full IFR ground school at the link here or in the description.